soul winning tip for today is <clears throat> when you're giving someone the gospel and you're at the door, well, a good way to get people to help to understand the gospel and to understand the message is to use examples. So, um, you know, Jesus used this oftentimes when he was preaching to people that were not saved. He spoke to them in parables. And, um, you know, oftentimes use a lot of examples. And the examples I like to use, this is just an example of an example of what I'm talking about here is, uh, you know, making the, the gift of salvation as like a free gift. So that's one of, the, one of the examples that we use when we go out soul winning to help people understand that is say, hey, you know, if I were to give you a gift, how much money would you have to pay me? And they're like, nothing, like not if it's a gift, you know, and just kind of go through and explain and just give all the, all the details of like, you know, what a gift is. It's truly free, you know, you're receiving it for free. Someone had to pay for it, right? So the gift for it with of eternal life was paid for by God, and we don't pay for that gift. And that's one illustration, and that's an example that's straight out of the Bible. So, like, my favorite examples to use when I'm out soul winning are ones that, that have biblical references. Because you can tie that in perfectly to just help explain what the gospel message is. What, you know, what is it? The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that, you know, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, you can say, well, what's that word? That's a gift. Eternal life is a gift. And then you just go into, like I said, all the details of, what is a gift? How do you get a gift? It's free. You know, you don't have to work for it. If you earn it, it's not a gift anymore, just by definition. That, and my other favorite one I like to use is being born again. You know, in, in John chapter 3, Jesus talks about, you know, verily, you know, it must, you must be uh, born again in order to see the kingdom of God. And I explain that about being a child, being a son of God how you can never lose your salvation because once you're a son, once you're a child of God, you're a child forever. And you're born into his family in the same way my children have one birth date. They were born at one time. They have a date. Yes, that's when they were born. Whether they obey my rules or not, they're always my children. And these are things that people could completely understand. I mean, this is this is day-to-day -day stuff, right? I mean, just give an example of a gift. Give an example of being born again. People can connect with that and relate with that. And I really like using that, especially for the eternal security part of salvation. Because people typically don't have a hard time saying, oh yeah, well I'm a bad person, or you know, I've sinned and I deserve hell. Okay, you can see that, it's pretty clear in the Bible. And you can also see where, okay, well all I have to do is put my faith in Jesus Christ. So, okay, yeah, that's, you know, a lot of people agree with that even and see that. But... Well, a lot of times I think people have a hard time just comprehending the fact that it's complete, it's over, it's finished. You put your faith in Christ, like that is salvation 100%. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to work for it. You can't lose that salvation in some kind of a works-based type of mentality. So these types of examples are great for just driving home that point of, of what does it really mean to, so that people can get that aha moment like, oh, the lights are like, that's what you're talking about. When you say put your faith in Christ, it's just, I mean, that's it. Like, like it's completely on Him. So using examples is a very good way of getting people just to understand what you're talking about. The other thing that I use examples for no, is to try to understand what that person truly is believing. People will say a lot of things and they'll repeat a lot of things that they've heard before. So if someone will say, oh yeah, you know, in order to be saved, you just believe in Jesus Christ, which is the right answer, and it's true. But they're not necessarily believing that in their heart. So I like to use examples and say, okay, well, let's just say you have a situation where, you know, someone 16, they put their faith in Christ. You know, according to the Bible, they're saved, right? They put their faith in Him. But then what happens if 10 years later they, uh, they rob a bank and kill somebody? And maybe they're not even sorry that they did it. You know, like, like ask questions like that. Just, just give an example and say, well, what do you think would happen to that person then? You know, like, would that person still go to heaven or would they go to hell? Because that will drive in and, and really help you to know, well, what does this person honestly believe? Because as soon as they say, like, well, no, they go to hell. Well, then you know that they're not just trusting in Jesus alone and, and that faith is enough. They're believing that, oh, well, because he didn't live right, that somehow, you know, it's not, it's not enough. And it's not good enough. So examples are great to help people to comprehend just the, the, the gospel. And it's also good for helping you to identify what that person truly believes, just so that you're not, you know, 
having erring in your judgment in, of, of whether or not the person you're talking to really is saved or, or what kind of what they need to, to hear more about. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're out soul winning. Make a, make a conscious point to, because when we're preaching the gospel, we're not just running down a list of just like reciting verses and, and running off of a script, right? Obviously, we're having a conversation with someone. We're trying to reach that person and, and, and help them to understand what the gospel message really is. Obviously, we're using a lot of Bible verses because God's word is what's powerful. But we're going to try to help explain that to people, just like the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, he said, how can I understand these things, basically, unless some man shows me. You know? So we're there to show them that and to help explain that and show that to them. So the best way you can do that, you know, use the examples to understand what they believe and then use examples to just get the point across of how salvation truly is a free gift. So that's our lesson for today. We're going to pray real fast and then we'll head out.